Welcome back to the Other Sub Footy YouTube channel. And wow, footy's back in a big way. Forget Thursday's game with between Melbourne and Sydney. Let's talk about Brisbane and Carlton last night. If you missed last night's game, then you've missed arguably one of the greatest modern AFL comebacks in recent history. Carlton were 48 points down in the second quarter and looked like they were stuck in a deep hole and nothing could have saved them. The Blues from the get-go were absolutely rattled and were getting killed in every single facet of the game, whether that be contested possessions or clearances. The most glaring thing for me was their inability to transition to transition from defense to forward. They looked the least cohesive a side could have looked. Not only were they without their big guns in Weedering and Walsh, matters were made worse when Sam Doherty had to be subbed out of halftime with knee complaints. On the other hand, Brisbane came out all guns blazing. Zorko pitched in with two early goals. Rayner, Neil, McLuggage and McInerney were, were pretty much waltzing out of the midfield, allowing for a barrage of inside 50s, which did subsequently lead to a bunch of marks inside 50 for the Lions. However, they weren't able to capitalize that, particularly in the second quarter, scoring only two goals, seven, where they had the opportunity to put Carlton to sleep early in that game, if it wasn't already over at that point. And to make matters worse for Brisbane in that moment, Coleman was subbed out at half time with a, unfortunately a suspected ACL after having a kick smothered and uh, leading to a, a hyperextension of the knee. Early in the third quarter, a spark was lit for the Blues thanks to Charlie Kerno with two early successive back-to-back -back goals. And from there, it really was a tale of two halves. Carlton got the upper hand in, in pretty much every every stat that was available. And more importantly, they were able to finally transition the ball. They looked like a team who, who knew how to move the ball. And that was on show for the entire second half, thanks to players like Zach Williams, Mitch McGovern, and then the rest of the squad further up the ground as well. You could also make the case that Jack Carroll, the sub coming on for Sam Doherty got the ball rolling in the midfield with, I think he finished with 10 possessions and four clearances all in the space of a half for a player who Brisbane Lions probably didn't do a lot of homework on going into this game. So he will be one of the unsung heroes for Carlton's win last night. It seemed Jack Carroll had inspired his midfield in Big Cripper, George Hewitt, Adam Chera. All of a sudden they started to lift and they really uh, steered the boat in the right direction from there. And what was considered an undermanned defense without Marchbank and Weedering, you saw McGovern, uh, Lewis Young, and Adam Saad really step up and pretty much shut up shop when the ball did come into their defensive 50, accumulating intercept marks and just wearing their opposition like a glove. Sure, you, Charlie Cameron had his moments and Lincoln McCarthy was great within his own right. Danaher will be Joe Danaher and, and kick goals and take great marks, but I thought they were really able to nullify the, the imposing threat that, that Brisbane's forward line uh, had for yesterday's game, considered the, the considering the matchup de deficits that were in that that were present in that game. In the fourth quarter, it was a lot of back and forth, uh, a few lead changes. Brisbane would have a have a say, then Carlton would have a say, but in the end, Harry Mackay took a mark on Harris Andrews, and we'll talk about that matchup in a moment took a chess mark against Harris Andrews and was able to compose himself and kick straight from 40 meters out, which was in the end, the winning goal for Carlton. Lions will clearly rue the missed chances they had on goal and the surplus of inside 50s they had. I think they had 62 inside 50 to Carlton's 49. So really uh, two conversely different, I guess, results for both teams. An efficient Carlton when they had opportunities and, and a Brisbane Lions team who were just playing with their food and, and gave their, the food being Carlton a chance to come back into the game. I really think Carlton have solidified some new words in the vocabulary. Mindfully, obviously, last season, they definitely uh, started to suggest that these were some of the words that would be a part of their, their identity. But I'm talking about things like adversity, resilience, and desire. If that wasn't on show late last season with their comeback late in the year, then we've seen it last night and it's here to stay and it's a part of their identity moving forward. Moving on to some of the key matchups that I think had a really big say on the outcome of the game. We have firstly Charlie Kerno versus Jackson Payne. I thought this was a bit of a mismatch going into the game. Uh, especially with Darcy Gardner moving forward. Harris Andrews was occupied by Harry Mackay. So if the ball was able to come into Carlton's forward line uh, with some sort of quality on, on the inside 50s, I thought Kerno could really take advantage of it. 
and he really capitalised on that matchup in the second half, uh, kicking in the end, kicking four goals. He was he was too good in the air, and then when the ball hit the deck, he was just too quick on the ground ball uh, for Jackson Payne. And I think Brisbane tried to make a change in the fourth quarter, but it was too little, too late uh, with Darcy Gardner moving back. Kerner was already on fire, and the spark was already lit, and there was too many fires that that Lions had to attend to, uh, as far as some of the players that were turning it on for the Carlton team in that second half. So as I said, Kerno four goals once the game was all said and done, and Jackson Payne was arguably one of the least effective players on that field last night. The second matchup I'd like to talk about is Harris Andrews versus Harry Mackay. Now, very like for like as far as size was concerned, so I was really intrigued to see how this would pan out. And Harris Andrews, within his own right, did many great things, took four intercept marks and spoiled pretty much anything that came his way. But when Harry Mackay wasn't on Harris Andrews at certain points, that's when Harry was able to take some marks inside 50. I think he took four marks inside 50 for the game, which was more than half of what Carlton's marks inside 50 were as a team uh, altogether. So that was a positive sign for Harry Mackay. And then I think in the second half, Harris Andrews started to um, Harris Andrews started to wear Mackay a lot closely. And what was really impressive was watching Harry Mackay try to take marks the highest point where nobody could usually typically contest the the point where Harry Mackay is able to meet the ball. Harris Andrews was right there. And if Harris Andrews couldn't intercept Mackay's plays, then he was at least spoiling it and bringing it down to ground. So that was a really uh, impressive matchup for me and, and I think a win for both of them. Obviously, that last play where Mackay was able to take the chest mark, it was probably one of the only times when Mackay was able to uh, outmark Harris Andrews. So, a great matchup. Most importantly, Harry Mackay was able to kick straight, kicking three goals one, and also had a handy uh, wealth of uh, contested possessions. I think he had 10 to finish the game. So, really good output from a key forward like Harry Mackay. The last matchup I want to touch on was Saad versus Charlie Cameron. And similar to how Brisbane's first half looked against Carlton's second half, it was a tale of two halves for that matchup as well. Thought Charlie Cameron got going really early. He was a beneficiary of the amount of inside 50s and the quality of inside 50s Brisbane we're getting, uh, taking three marks inside 50, but Will Rue, the missed chances himself, uh, I think ended up finishing with two goals, four. So if he kicks two of those uh, four behinds, then the game obviously looks different and uh, Brisbane probably win in the end if he kicks straight. In the second half, I thought Saad did really well uh, matching Cameron on the the ground ball domain and was competitive in the air, made a couple mistakes, uh, looked like he misjudged one and he actually uh, late in the, the last quarter took, looked to have taken a really good intercept mark on Cameron. But I think with Cameron's presence of just uh, Cameron praying and waiting for Saad to potentially drop the ball, which eventuated, uh, Cameron was able to capitalize and kick a goal from that. So I think a, a, a win for both of those players, but and they both res had good moments respectively in their own right. Next on ground for me was Charlie Curto by far and away. Four goals uh, was unmatched in the air, on the ground, and his desire to stay in the game uh, early in that third quarter is what got a lot of those Carlton boys going. And he shared that energy when he kicked those goals with those celebrations and and develops little spot fires for the Lions with, with other players who are up and about now because of those goals Kerno kicked, which we'll never be able to measure. So for me, clearly, Charlie Kerno best on and got the ball rolling for them to pretty much... and got the ball rolling for them to complete one of the greatest modern AFL comebacks in recent history. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye.